And then we want to be friend, family friendly experiences. And in this area, there's one predominant factor that you want to keep in mind. If you're going to write down one item out of this whole list, it's that this group of people is always, 100% of the time, looking for something nicer than they have at home. So if they have a nursery at home, and you've got a nursery that's not as nice as that nursery, you're, they're not coming back. If they have a... You know, you're putting your kids into a room that's not as nice as their room at home, that, you know, it's going to be a short visit. That is just what all the research shows on this. And there's not a single piece of research that doesn't prove that out and, and important for you to look at. So they have very high expectations. Did we have high expectations of that? No, we didn't. Didn't, didn't pay any attention to it. Terry used the outhouse. You know, that was okay for them for a while anyway, uh, you know, but uh, wouldn't work today. Uh, and uh, so uh, we, uh, we do have kind of a demanding group. Uh, children and youth spaces have to be better. I'm going to use Terry's church as an example again, and, and him and I have had this conversation. But if he had not made the changes that he made to his building, all the good preaching in the world, all the good ideas in the world would, would not have been nearly as effective as having the combination of those changes. Upgrading that, he's got a beautiful facility, it, the, the restrooms are nice, the nurseries are nice, the kids areas are really, really nice. That's the combination that works. And you can do it in existing buildings and renovate and make that happen. You can do it in new buildings, you can do it in big boxes, you can do it in a lot of different ways. So. Uh, this is a children's area, and, and, and one of the things I tell people is the children's area that was the hallway with eight classrooms off of that hallway is a thing of the past. It, you know, now we have a children's main gathering area, and they come out of that main gathering area where they have these kind of things happening, and they go into classrooms for a period of that time, but they do all come together at one point. Uh, this might be used for first to third graders for... 45 minutes and then they go back into classrooms and the other people come out of those classrooms and it's used for fourth to sixth graders. So it, you, you it isn't just a one-time thing in terms of what it is. Uh, those wall coverings that you see on that particular wall are just taken from a postcard that we had blown up into wallpaper. Uh, that used to be $10 a square foot. Today we get it for about $250. And so that's a doable event for most churches. It's not a big item in terms of, of what you're trying to do. Uh, these are uh, uh, just some different sets and different ways of uh, doing things when you're having puppet shows or any of those other things. That hallway in the upper left just shows what you can do with color. Uh, and color doesn't cost much, you can, but you know, I, I wouldn't put that green in my house, but it works well in, a, in, in the church. The kids are attracted to it. Uh, when we put windows from the hallway into the kids' areas, we typically drop them down to their level. You know, on their level, they're looking at a wall. We're looking at a window up here. And, and we'll cock it 45 degrees so it's not in there straight. And, uh, and it just gives that that feel of, of what they're trying to do. Uh, and, and give them some sets. Uh, as they get older, you increase the amount of things that could happen to them and, and uh, create just a little bit more chaos in the space that, that exists. Indoor playgrounds. Uh, we're putting these in both children's areas or in third places. We, we, we actually use them in both places, not, not, not both at the same time, but one or the other. Uh, because they work well in a third place while the parents are, in, are sitting around talking and enjoying. And they can see their little kids out there doing something. And they still use them during the, during the time with the church. But they use them also back in the children's areas very effectively. We are hardly doing a church that doesn't put one of these in. I, I, I actually don't think we are doing a church today uh, that is not putting an indoor playground in. Uh, because they make so much money. Uh, this one is not an expense to your church, this is an income producer. As uh, soon as you put one in, you don't have to advertise this, you don't have to do anything else with it. What happens? Pe people come and say, can I have a birthday party there for my four-year-old? And guess what's happening? They're bringing 30 other people with them that did not, don't go to your church. 
for a birthday party at your church. Uh, we've got a church that's 10 years old, has received over one half million dollars of income from using that for parties at two to three hundred dollars a crack. Church in Joshua that we did, that's how they grew the families into the church. It wasn't putting a sign out front that said, welcome families, please stop in, you know, where are you at? They started having people coming in and wanting birthday parties and then they said, wow, this is a wonderful children's area here, we'll come and see you on Sunday. It's, you know, and they're making tons of money while they're going about doing it. They're, they're making on the average about $5,000 a month on a playground. It is just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, we highly recommend that you do your youth area or your children's areas as daycares. Uh, whether you run a daycare or not is not important. It's probably better to lease it, but, uh, but use the building effectively. Uh, we just leased, a, uh, helped the church lease a, a, their children's area for a daycare in Ogden. They're getting $6,800 a month from the daycare facility to use that. Uh, the reason I say that you're better off leasing it is that you don't have to pay income tax on that. Uh, 501c3s have a thing called unrelated business tax. So if you do something that's unrelated, you have to pay corporate income tax, which can be pretty substantial. It can be 30% of what you're trying to do. Uh, if any of you have any questions on unrelated business income tax, I have a white paper on that that I'll be happy to send you if you'll just jot me a note or something and I'll get it sent right out to you. But here's, here's what's interesting is that passive income is not taxable to a church. And I'll just explain this very quickly. So passive income is things like renting something to someone. You could rent uh, your office space to me as an architect in a for-profit business and you would not pay income tax on that because it's passive income, it's rental of space. So when you rent to a daycare, it's passive income. But let's assume you run the daycare. If you run the daycare, and that's not passive income anymore, and all the kids that come in there are members of your church, you do not pay taxes on that. But if one child comes in there that is not a member of your church, you do. And, and almost all daycares are not run for your church, it's run for the community, and, and now that becomes a taxable event. So, so uh, uh, kind of keep that in mind as you're there. But these become attractive for daycares. These become attractive for birthday parties. These become attractive for growing families in your church. Uh, and this gets off this subject just a hair, but we many times don't have churches buy this equipment. Uh, we many times do not have that as part of the budget of the program that's there. A playground like this can be thirty or forty thousand dollars, and. And, uh, and the reason we don't have it in the church budget is somebody always says, couldn't we use thirty dollars or $40,000 better some other way than a playground for our kids? I don't know why they say that, but that's what they, that somebody does always say that. And the fact is, it's probably the greatest ministry producer that you could possibly put in. But here's what we do, is, and we do it similar to what we do with solar, is... It's actually better to have somebody else buy it if you're going to go borrow the money. So, you know, for instance, when we put a solar system on a building, you can't use any of the tax credits. I mean, there's great tax credits, but it doesn't do a church any good. So, so just get 10 people in the church to put in the solar system. They get the depreciation. Uh, they get the tax credits. Uh, let them own it, lease it to the church, which is going to be the same as borrowing the money to go do that. And at the end of seven years, they donate it to the church and get a huge tax credit off of it. I can show you how your people in the church could get a 28% per year return by putting in that system while they're giving a benefit to the church and solar energy. Now, that's the kind of thinking that we've got to look at as our giving drops, as we go into this generation going the other direction and the new generation coming in. Same with the playgrounds. You could get four or five people to put up seven or eight thousand dollars as an investment. They would get some original money. They would make a little profit on it, better than the bank, four or five percent, which is what you'd you'd pay seven or eight percent to borrow the money, uh, maybe six or seven, and and so you're going to borrow it at less money. They get the depreciation at the end of seven years. They donate it to the church. It's paid for through the, through the money. That, and they donate it and get another big donation. 
And again, they get a nice return off of what it is as private enterprise. So if you want to know more about that, I, we can talk later on in terms. But, but playgrounds have been a great thing. Uh, youth areas, specifically for youth, is important. Uh, basically, uh, those have been in our buildings for a long time, but not done as well as they could be done. Uh, putting in separate entries, a uh, separate way for them to get into the building than through all the other spaces that other people have is extremely important to them. Uh, kids are way more likely to bring their friends to church and to, to the youth area if they don't go through the main church entry if they you know, come in some other way in terms of what it is. And, and it's still attached to the building and part of what it is. 